I almost had us um, sing that last verse over again and had uh, Renee move over a little closer to the podium, turn the uh, uh, YouTube just a little bit that direction, but I was afraid she'd get stage fright and uh, mess up. But uh, you did a great job tonight, really enjoyed that, and you too, Brother Travis. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the fourth chapter of the book of 2 Corinthians. Is she going to type the children's library for a quick one? Yes, she wants to. I uh, said, so, yeah, she tucked them back there. Anyway, um, everybody got put these lights in there. I thought it was the dark in here. I tell you, I brought my glasses down here, my reading glasses, some time ago. I used them down here, stuck them in my pocket, took them home, and I've been without them the last two times. So today I determined that I was going to bring my bring my glasses with me. So I stick them in my pocket, I pull them out, and I put them on, and I can see that back door really good with these. I just can't see the <laughs> the print here. I've got the so evidently I got the wrong ones, and um, I don't wear glasses normally. Uh, uh, it's amazing. Um, Back in 1961, no, but this is, I got to hear thanks. Back in 1961, I was on a flight line with Captain Myers, and uh, we were watching the uh, F-101 Voodoo's come in, and uh, uh, we would report the number on the plane, and I'm there with binoculars, you know, and I'm looking, trying to find that number on that plane, and uh, Captain Wagner said, boy, Said, I'd sure hate to be up there with you and you, you pilot in this thing. You can't see thunder. You need to go get your eyes checked. I went and got my eyes checked, and sure enough, I needed glasses, so I started wearing glasses. I hated them. Uh, later, I decided to get contacts. I got contacts, and I wore them for a couple of three years. Hated them, too. And um, I don't know. I just quit wearing them and haven't worn them now in the last 20 years or so. And... Um, up until recently, I didn't feel like I needed them, but um, uh, I don't know why. I guess the words on my pages keep shrinking up, uh, getting smaller or something. But anyway, um, uh, God is good. I can't put these on because I can't see the pages with them. I, they're my long range <laughs> uh, glasses there. So I'll have to get my reading glasses and bring them down. Anyway, I got a uh, Monday morning, I guess it was, I believe it was Monday. I'm sure it was Monday. And uh, I went in, as I always do, go in, sit down, I, I open up a Bible and uh, begin to read a little bit before prayer. And I just opened up to the fourth chapter of Second Corinthians. And I read the first verse there. Uh, the first verse says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry that we have received mercy, we faint not. And you know what we do with therefore. Remember, therefore is a conjunction that ties what was previously said to what's about to be said. And so, therefore, since we have this ministry, what ministry? Well, I went all the way back to verse 1 of chapter 3, and I started reading through. If you look at verse 4 there, he says uh, uh, in chapter 3, For as much as we are uh, manifestly um, declared to be uh, the epistles of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in um, lively uh, table, in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to Godward. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, um, for our sufficiency is of God. Now then, I spent uh, the last two days um, uh, studying chapter 3, chapter 4. I can preach you a message tonight with seven points on it. Uh, if you start there in uh, chapter 3, verse 2, uh, we have uh, who we are. We are the epistle um, known and read of all men. Uh, if you drop down to um, 
about uh, what is it um, uh, verse uh, 3 there um, who we have we have the Holy Spirit living in our hearts uh, and um, guiding us uh, we skip all the way down to about verse 12 we have our hope uh, seeing then that we have such hope um, we um, uh, have great uh, plainness of speech uh, if we go up to um, uh, chapter 4 verse 1 there uh, therefore we have a ministry um, uh, if we go to um, a chapter or to a verse um, um, 3 of um, uh, we have why uh, the unsaved are lost uh, if we drop down to verse 5 we have who um, um, if I can read my writing there, uh, let me read the sentence of what it is there. For we preach, okay, who we preach. Uh, and we preach Christ, uh, not ourselves there. Uh, if we come on down to about verse um, uh, 7 there, uh, why we uh, have, uh, notice here he says there in verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So we have, uh, uh, sometimes we wonder why we have trials and tribulations and so forth. Uh, it is uh, that uh, uh, we would recognize that um, uh, it's not of us, but uh, uh, it's the... Uh, uh, it's God to get glory. If you go to chapter 12 there, you remember uh, in 2 Corinthians, uh, we have there where Paul uh, is given the thorn in the flesh. And uh, he didn't understand why he had it. He sought God three times to deliver it from it. Finally, God says, uh, uh, Paul, my grace is sufficient. In other words, uh, um, if I if I don't uh, give you this thorn in the flesh, you're going to become so exalted because of the abundance of the revelations that you received uh, when you were taken up to the third heaven there. You'll become no use for me. Uh, so, uh, Paul, uh, I'm going to give you this thorn in the flesh there, uh, uh, but uh, you'll find that uh, my grace is sufficient. When Paul understands why he has it, uh, then uh, he says, I will gladly therefore suffer uh, for um, and uh, tribulation so forth uh, that God might be glorified um, uh, if we come on down um, uh, if we drop on down to about uh, oh, um, well if we look at the whole chapter there I can give you three uh, keys to living a life of peace now then I can preach all that to you tonight it would take longer than you want me to um, but uh, while I had it all down and I knew exactly what I was going to preach uh, this afternoon or this morning, I came down uh, uh, just to, um, I had checked out the water uh, out there and trying to figure out how to get this year fixed. And I think we, we, we can fix that without breaking out the concrete. Uh, it does have, a, I went and got a, uh, went in and looked at one and had the guy explain all the mechanisms to us so right now the little cap on there is uh, keeping it from leaking and uh, so uh, but I think uh, we can fix that without breaking out the concrete but I left the cap open out there where I, I was going to turn the water off at uh, and uh, Tim and I was going to address it to the other evening but by the time he got here it had turned pretty cool and it wasn't leaking and he said why don't we leave it alone if it's not uh, you know if it's working don't fix it type attitude and if it quits working then we will address it um, but um, I got up this morning I happened to think I didn't um, take that uh, didn't put that cap back uh, out there and uh, so I wanted to come down and uh, address that and when I walked into the church uh, gas was so strong and so forth and then I'd run Lois to Stigler and all afternoon I didn't have a chance really to look at this but God kept uh, bringing to my mind verse uh, 5 and I would encourage you if you haven't memorized it memorize it analyze it live it out uh, because we have found it to be faithful. What I, uh, God has laid on my heart to do tonight is to, uh, sometimes I ask for testimonies without getting uh, uh, very many. Tonight I want to give you 
uh, testimony uh, tied in with verse 5 there. Not that we are sufficient of anything in ourselves, uh, but our sufficiency is of God. Let me say to you, over the last 30 years, I've said a number of times, Tornado King was the name of our company that we started when we got down here. Uh, I've said that many times, Tornado King is not my sufficiency. This church is not my sufficiency. I don't work for this church. Uh, I work for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my boss. And, um, uh, and, and, and therefore, he is the one that supplies our need. Over the last 31 years, uh, uh, Tornado King, there were times when we had dry seasons and Tornado King uh, uh, didn't supply our needs up for a period of time there. Uh, and then um, things would pick up. Uh, spring would come and storms uh, uh, would uh, hit here or there or somewhere and people would become more conscious they needed a storm shelter. And uh, over the uh, 29 years, uh, 31 years, actually, uh, uh, God provided our needs. Uh, there are times when this church pays us, a, uh, it pays us a salary all the time, except for the fact that there were several months back, uh, I believe in 2008, that uh, the church was not able to pay us uh, between May and uh, November, and uh, uh, yet uh, 31 years now, and I say 31 years because it was 31 years, it's 1990 that uh, Lois and I began to pray about, and we began to pursue trying to find out where it was that God wanted us to be. When we finally found out where God wanted us to be, uh, then we quit two good jobs, we sold our house, we moved down here uh, in a borrowed van and set up housekeeping in a 600 square foot house. Uh, we were paid $700 a month. Uh, if you've tried to live on $700 a month, you know you can't do that. Uh, uh, but um, we made a covenant with God right after we got here when we started to build this building that if God would meet our needs so that we could walk before him with integrity, so that we could uh, uh, walk among the people with integrity, uh, that he'd pay our bills, well, then um, we would... Um, uh, we would no longer pursue uh, uh, knocking doors and so forth. We would work here at the church. And uh, when we moved down here, we were both in our late 40s. Uh, next month, I'll be 80. Actually, I was 80 in July of last year, but uh, some reason know they don't count those first nine months. Um, but um, uh, anyway, and uh, Lois has already done got there. Uh, but uh, our credit has been superb ever since we've been here. Uh, we've been able to borrow more than we needed to borrow. Not once did we uh, 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 had our credit or our name uh, jeopardized. We were able to pay off our home uh, before the church couldn't pay us. Uh, we had to go and uh, and and hawk the home, uh, but um, uh, God paid it off again. And what I'm saying is, uh, nothing that we did, uh, our uh, our sufficiency. Uh, I made that statement a number of times to different individuals uh, that our sufficiency is in God. Uh, and let me say to you, my friend, we are not sufficient enough within ourselves to keep ourselves healthy. We're not sufficient enough uh, uh, to make the right, in our wisdom, to make the right decision every time we have a decision to make. Um, we uh, certainly do not have the inward power to convert a soul or to win somebody to the Lord or uh, to fulfill the ministry of reconciliation that God has given us. Uh, we are not sufficient enough, uh, our friend, to pay our bills uh, if God chooses uh, to um, um, tighten, uh, bring about a situation. Uh, imagine if you're in Ukraine tonight uh, and you don't have food or water, you don't have heat, uh, and you've got a war raging around you, uh, uh, and uh, 
I'm sure some of those uh, Ukrainians had uh, monthly payments coming in. Uh, they're not meeting those monthly payments right now because they are caught up in circumstances uh, that makes it impossible. Many people who uh, are good, honest, hardworking people uh, find afflictions coming up on them that they were not aware of. Accidents happen that uh, uh, they uh, didn't plan uh, and, and, and consequently felt themselves sales inadequate within their own strength, within their own might uh, uh, to uh, uh, keep themselves afloat physically, spiritually, or financially. Uh, uh, and uh, But the good news is that we don't have to keep ourselves uh, afloat. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, if we will seek the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, then all these other things will be added unto you. In other words, we have Jesus's unequivocal promise that God, who knows the number of the hairs on our head, that God who feeds the sparrow, that God who clothes the lilies, uh, that uh, uh, God is knows what our needs are even before we ever bring them to him, and that God who uh, clothes the lilies uh, with a greater splendor than Solomon in all of his glory uh, uh, could match. God who uh, feeds the sparrows uh, and not a single one falls, but what God uh, is aware of it. And uh, Jesus says that we are so much better than the sparrow. Uh, our friend, listen, uh, God can take care of us. And now for some... Um, 30 odd years without the good job that we had. Uh, when we moved down here, uh, we moved down here in a borrowed uh, van. I, I, I was reading some the other day, Kim, uh, our goddaughter's 34 now, she was four when we moved down here, and, and I was reading, uh, she was she had written a paper on something or other, and she was talking about when she moved down here, and she said, my, my papa and my mimi, we moved down here in an old van, uh, I loaded down, uh, uh, to the ceiling, um, uh, and we moved into this little bitty cabin. And uh, uh, but uh, today, we gave up up there a lowest twelve. 1,400 at the most square foot house. Today we have a 2,400 square foot house. Way too big for us. Uh, 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 when we moved down here, we uh, didn't have a savings account. I don't guess we ever had a savings account up until uh, the last couple of three years when we finally started putting a little bit in savings. Uh, but God has blessed us now over the last 30 years. He's met every need in our life. Uh, when I married Lois, I told her, I said, if you'll marry me, uh, she had never been anywhere uh, uh, other than to Texas and back. Uh, uh, and that was the northern part of Texas. Uh, and I said, if you'll marry me, I'll show you the world. In the last 30 years, we had the privilege of going to Europe. We had the privilege of going to Asia. We had the privilege of going to Mexico two or three times. We had the privilege of going to Canada uh, and ministering up there uh, or being ministered to up there. We had the privilege of going to Alaska. And uh, uh, what I'm simply saying is uh, God is more than sufficient. And if we're willing to trust God, so that we give God what belongs to God. And by the way, what belongs to God is you and I, if we are Christian. I uh, have a piece of paper at the house that says that Lois and I own our house. We don't. Uh, it's paid for, but it belongs to God. Uh, we have uh, two vehicles that... Uh, uh, are paid for and our names are on the title but they're not ours they belong to God everything that we have belongs to him because we belong to him and when everything that you have belongs to God 
when you're not afraid to give above what you're able to give, uh, friend, and you give it anyway, uh, you'll find that God, uh, I'm not preaching a prosperity, God, prosperity gospel here. I'm not telling you that God will give you $2 if you give one. I'm just simply saying that God will bless you and God will take care of you. And, and there will be times when God will let you go through uh, valleys there. Uh, uh, and there will be times when uh, you won't know. I remember uh, when, um, and uh, probably Travis M. is tired of hearing it, uh, but uh, when we first started here, uh, we uh, we uh, decided to uh, start Tornado King, and um, uh, we uh, didn't have advertisement. We were out knocking doors, and uh, we had decided to buy this piece of property here, and I was up there close to where Troy lives, and uh, I was praying, God, you know, uh, I need to be at the church. I need to be working down at the church. Uh, God, you know, I've got to pay my bills. I've got, if I'm going to be a pastor, I've got to be an individual of integrity, and uh, uh, I've got to uh, live with honesty towards my creditors and so forth. Uh, and while I'm telling God what I've got to do, uh, God shot right through my mind, Matthew 6, where he says there, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these things will be added unto you. Before I even had a chance to think, uh, right behind that came a question into my mind, do you believe that? And what do you say? Uh, when you're supposed to be a preacher, and God quotes a verse of scripture to you, and God says, do you believe that verse of scripture uh, I read? Uh, I said, yes, God, I believe it. Uh, and that morning I made a covenant with God that uh, I would not knock another door unless he brought it in over the phone. At that time, uh, Lois had just began to start to advertise uh, uh, in some papers or in a phone book. Um, and uh, I said, unless we get it, uh, a call on the telephone, I will not pursue it. If you give me a call on the phone, I will pursue it with all of my ability, uh, and uh, otherwise I'll work at the church. That was September the 21st, 1993. Uh, September the 21st, 1993, we laid the foundation to this building here, uh, and every single day between uh, uh, September the 21st, and December the 15th, uh, we were here at this church. We did not knock a single door except uh, the fact that God gave us a few calls that came in. None of them turned into sales. Uh, and um, uh, But one did pursue it. And uh, uh, we sold a storm shelter to the Girl Scouts. We sold it to them for $50,000. Uh, we had been living off our credit cards and uh, Lois told me on Saturday uh, that um, uh, you've got to go get a job. Uh, we've been living on our credit cards and uh, we, uh, they're all full. I told her, I said, if God doesn't do something by Monday, then I'll go find a job. I preached this message on faith that Sunday and uh, when I got through preaching it, I told Lois, I said, God is going to meet our needs. I came back and worked at the church on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we got a check in the mail for $25,000. We paid off our credit cards. Uh, and uh, today, the only credit card I have is American Express and a couple of gasoline cards that I uh, don't uh, uh, hardly ever use. Uh, never do I pay a penny of interest uh, uh, on any card that I have. They're all paid before the bill comes due. Uh, uh, and um, I haven't said this. I'm not saying this to in any sense of the word uh, say anything about what Lois and I have done. We have just done what God led us to do. And consequently, God has been our sufficiency. Today we live in a bigger house. Today we have two nice vehicles. 
Today we have a bank account, uh, and uh, uh, today uh, we are financially better off than at any time in our marriage. Um, uh, God is sufficient. And uh, so when we read uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, now, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Folks, listen, if we can get in our heads that our sufficiency is of God, then we are taking the first step in living a life of peace, a life of serenity, uh, knowing that uh, whatever need we have, God will supply it. For he has done so now for 30 years. Polycarp, the great uh, first century uh, child of the saint of God, who was being burned at the stakes, They tried to get him to recant. And he made this statement. Some 80 years now, Jesus has been good to me. How can I refuse him now? And history says he sung as he was being burned at the stake. My friend, we serve a loving God. We serve a God who is bigger than any problem that we can encounter. Uh, he is more sufficient than any uh, need that we will ever have. Uh, and um, when you think you don't have a friend in the world, if you're walking and trusting in him, you have Jesus. And my friend, he is sufficient. Uh, even uh, to walk with us by himself. Kenny used to sing this song. Just uh, He just started it and then he didn't sing it much. Uh, uh, but um, uh, I, uh, I find myself every now and then humming it. Uh, it says, when, uh, when, I am, uh, when I am sad and my soul is oh so weary, when trouble comes and my heart, it burdens me. I just sit and wait alone in silence until you come and sit a while with me. He lifts me up so that I can stand on mountains. He raised me up to walk on troubled seas. I am strong when I am on his shoulder. You raised me up to be more than I can be. I feel, listen, you want to be more than you can be. Then believe that God is your sufficiency. Live in full confidence of the fact that whatever need you have, God is able to supply it. And uh, when you get 80, as I'm about to turn, and you look back, you'll be able to say, through all my years, he was faithful. Not once did he ever fail me. He is my sufficiency. Nothing wrong with going to school, going to college, nothing wrong with pursuing a good paying job. Nothing wrong with being a millionaire as long as you have the money and the money doesn't have you. As long as God has the money and you are in either one doesn't uh, have you. But uh, he is your sufficiency. My friend, God will bless you. God will use you. And God will bring glory to you as you bring glory and honor to him. 
as he is, uh, his excellency is what you are living for. So he says here in chapter 4, uh, verse 6, if I have the right verse, For God, who commandeth the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, or in the person, if you will, of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. What he means by we have this treasure, the treasure, by the way, is this gospel that we're preaching. Uh, and what he means by we have it in earthen vessels, my friend, earthen vessels shatter easily. They can be broken. They can be scattered into pieces. But God is able to put them back together again. God is able to hold them together. And God is able to use it for his glory and for his honor. So, short sermon tonight. But if you can get, if you can, if you can, uh, uh, you know, just make this a part of your being. If you can put uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 5 to memory. And then determine that in every aspect of your life, your sufficiency is in God. One day you may be president of the United States. One of these days you may have the money of a uh, um, whoever is rich. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, but uh, even if you can write a check for a hundred million dollars, and it would fly, I would hope that your sufficiency is not in the hundred million dollars you might have, but your sufficiency will be in God. For the hundred million dollars can take wings in a hurry and fly away, but God will stand with you as long as you will stand with him. And God will bless you as long as you glorify him. As long as you put your trust in him. My friend, you have nothing that you need to worry about. You can live out Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 where Paul says be anxious for nothing. That is don't worry about anything but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God that passes understanding will keep your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Father, Lord, we're so thankful that we serve God, such a sufficient God. Lord, we're so thankful, Father, that Lord, somehow, along life's way, God, you burned that truth into our hearts, into Lois' heart, God, into our minds. And Father, we found you to be faithful. And Lord, as we come, Lord, ever closer to that day when these bars of bone are going to give away. And we'll take our flight like a mighty eagle. Father, to that reward that you have for us. We're looking forward to the day. May we be thankful until the end. We ask this in the name of Jesus and Father, in his wonderful name, we give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Father. Let's stand.